What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I am very happy to say my sweaters and hats are done. They're on the website. I'll have the website linked up in the corner and in the description. I want you guys to check this stuff out for a second. So this sweater is a 60-40 blend of cotton polyester and it is seriously the most comfortable sweater I've ever worn. So it's kind of a fleece inside material. Really soft, really comfortable. And as far as these hats go, I know you guys are thinking it's just another snapback trucker hat, but there is more to it than that. So these things actually are FlexFit brand. You see the FlexFit tech right there, and it actually has a FlexFit band. So I know for me at least, a lot of trucker hats, you're kind of in between the snaps on them for the size. And with this, with a FlexFit band, it really gives you a little bit of stretch. So it's really, really comfortable. You don't have that weird in between because it flexes. So go check this stuff out on the website, guys. I am very happy and very excited to get you guys these hats. I honestly didn't know these things existed, the flex fit. I didn't know they existed in a snapback trucker style until I started looking for hats and I wanted to bring you guys something extremely comfortable and more than what a lot of other companies do. A lot of people use those Richardson hats and yeah, they're, they're a decent hat, but these are a lot more comfortable in my opinion. So go check them out. And I'll also throw a couple pictures up of me wearing the sweater so you guys can kind of get a feel for what it looks like and how it fits. So if you missed the last one, we got the truck running good and there's a few issues we need to fix on it and that requires pulling the motor. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna yank the motor out. So the things we need to fix with the motor out is we need to relocate the dipstick I know it sounds dumb, but you cannot do it in the truck. There's too much in the way. You gotta drill through the block for the new dipstick. And it's just gonna be so much easier out of the truck. The rear main is leaking, so we need to fix that. Um, crossover pipe, the exhaust needs some attention. It's leaking, so we gotta fix that. And whatever else we find that needs work. So the previous owner of this truck actually did the swap and never finished it and a lot of stuff on the thing is just cobbled together and not done right. So I'm just gonna pull the motor out, do it right, fix everything we need to fix, and then we can get it back together and finish up the exhaust and all the wiring and all that good stuff. So really this motor should come out pretty easy. Um, basically all the wiring for the motor is here and another harness that runs down to the uh, underside of the truck down here which is a lot of it's not even being used. There's just a couple O2 sensors. A lot of that stuff is for, I believe the automatic tranny. So I'll basically be able to pull the connectors off the ECU for that harness and leave it on the motor. And then it's just a matter of intake, exhaust, coolant, um, obviously all the other little fuel lines and throttle cable all that good stuff so let's get started get the motor out and we can go through it fix everything that needs to be fixed
guys motors out so you can see how much oil is in that bell housing and it, I'm pretty sure that's motor oil it doesn't look like the tranny's leaking so I'm gonna have to pull the clutch and flywheel off I want to make sure that's a 3-4 clutch and flywheel so this is the crossover pipe the dude built kind of looks like it's out of the stock one added a piece here added some really nice welds on it so I'm gonna have to redo this section here um, just the crossover section the rest looks pretty good and it doesn't look like it's leaking so that should be okay Clutch and flywheel are off and pretty sure it's 3-0. So we're gonna have to replace that. As far as the leak, it looks like the rear main is fine. It looks like the oil pan on the bottom on the back right there is what is leaking. Um, I don't see any oil coming out of the seal. It's all on this surface right here. It's all coming off that surface right off the oil pan. So either way, the pan's coming off. So we're gonna reseal that. I may do a new rear main just to be sure. All right, I think I'm gonna get started on this crossover pipe. So what I'm gonna do first is, I think I'm gonna move the flex joint over this way, cut this weld out of here, probably here and here, and get that flex joint more straight across on the top. And that's kind of how I've seen all the aftermarket companies do it as well. And then I'll have to kind of figure out what kind of uh, bends I need to get down to that flange and still clear the uh, transmission there. Right, guys I couldn't really find any bends so I picked up just a straight piece and I'm just gonna angle the cut here angle the cut on the pipe and it'll just run up kind of like that and it should clear everything just fine so we'll have to pull this side back off figure out what angles we need and cut this cut the pipe and it should actually be pretty straight onto this upper piece here so let's get cut and see if we can get this thing to fit right So there it is guys, obviously it's not the best looking, you know, stainless TIG welded piece, um, but it's definitely functional and definitely a lot better than it was before. And it looks like we'll have plenty of clearance around that tranny. So that is good. So yeah, like I said, I'm not going all out on this build. So that's why I'm kind of reusing what was here. All I bought was just a little, that little straight piece, which is only a couple bucks. So. If I were to do this out of stainless, out of you know flanges and a V band and all the pipe and flex, I mean you'd be 100, 100 bucks or more into it. So I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to dump a bunch of money into this truck. The next thing we got to do is the rear main seal. So I picked up a new seal. So I'm gonna actually pull this whole plate off, unbolt it, reseal the plate, get the new seal in there. We can get that on, and then when everything else shows up, we can do the dipstick, pull the pan, get the pan sealed up, get the dipstick relocated. And I'm also gonna pull the AC pump off because obviously this truck has no AC and I really don't wanna have to swap the whole 
uh, the whole uh, HVAC unit under the dash and get everything for AC. So I'm just gonna run without it. So we're gonna pull the pump off. That'll give us a little more room in the engine bay as well. guys got the motor on the stand so we got the whole AC pump and pulley and everything off and rear main is in torqued down sealed up so we should be good to go there the next thing I'm gonna do is tackle this alternator harness here so I'm gonna get a new positive cable because that one is kind of just bolted together with something and taped up um, negative I'll probably leave but I gotta get all this other wiring out of here I don't need, like all this alternator wiring. I'm going to just cut this plug off and permanently splice it into here. And I'll just, I'll just use this harness, bolt it right down the alternator here. So we don't need any of that. And then there also is this black white wire, which is the starter wire, but the harness that we have has the uh, separate wire right there for it so we don't need that all right guys this harness is apart so this is really all i'm using out of it so just a plug for the alternator and the negative battery cable i am going to go get a new positive lead for the battery cable to the starter and then we'll kind of tape this harness back up we'll use this because i'm going to route it the same way so this just wraps kind of down, keeps it tucked up underneath the engine, along the oil pan, over to the starter. All right guys, there's the harness for the alternator. So that is all good to go. Something I just realized, and I didn't really pay attention to it before, but this wire here, this is the wire that connects to the big post on the alternator. So this is the wire that charges the battery. And this factory, it runs over to the alternator fuse and then into the battery somehow. But the way he had this set up, I'm pretty sure fried the ECU. So there was the other end of the wire grounded to the body right here. So essentially, the, bat, the alternator was throwing power into the body, which obviously isn't good, clearly. And I'm pretty sure that's the reason the ECU is bad. All right, we got the dipstick and tube and everything in. So this is the fitting that you have to drill into the block and that kind of uh, somewhat presses in, I guess. And then you got the tube itself, the dipstick, and then an O-ring. So I'll put all the part numbers on the screen for you guys to make it easy. So what we got to pull off this motor to get access for the front, we got to pull off the alternator and this water outlet. And then to drill the hole, so the hole is right here that we need to drill. There's a little boss in the block, so we'll have to pull the motor mount 
and the exhaust manifold off this side. So first I'm going to take the pan off, get all the stuff stripped off, get this dipstick out, and then I bought a quarter inch pipe plug. I'm going to thread the block, thread the pipe plug in, seal that up, and then we will see if we can get a drill in here and drill that uh, hole for the new dipstick. All right, pan is off so you can see where this dipstick comes in and just hits this plate and obviously the pan is only like an inch thick right here so that's why we're relocating it so we got to get this whole plate off punch out this factory dipstick flip it back over seal that hole up and then we can get to drill in this other hole which is going to come through right here in this hole here All right, guys, this is the plug I picked up. So this is a quarter 18 pipe plug, and this is the hole we're going to be tapping. So I'm just going to leave the motor upside down, so that way there's no chance of metal shavings. You know, obviously gravity will pull them down. I know you're not going to be able to see on the camera, but there's actually a step in this hole where the uh, dipstick bottoms out. A little, uh, maybe an eighth inch step. So we need to drill that out because the tap hits that step before it actually starts tapping any threads so we're going to drill that out with like a 7 16 and then we'll go ahead and tap the hole Guys, here's a better look at what we're drilling. So we're gonna drill right in the center of this boss here. And I think we're gonna have to pull a couple of studs, probably that one and that one. So I got two nuts against each other there. We're gonna see if these studs come out. We got that hole drilled. Not gonna lie, it was a little stressful, but looks like it came out pretty good. Pretty straight and centered in that boss. So now let's make sure that fitting fits and then we'll get the whole tube on, make sure everything lines up. There we go. Everything went together like it should. So very happy about that. So now we just gotta get the motor mount, all that stuff back on. I think that tube actually goes in between the motor mount. So we may have to pull it back off, but not a big deal. And I just gotta clean that pan up, get it resealed, all that good stuff. So let's get to it.
There it is guys, motor's all back together. Dipstick is good. So hopefully we have no more oil leaks. Every oil leak that I saw on this motor I resealed, so we should be good to go. So the last thing I need to do tomorrow is go grab a gasket for the manifold and then motor, it should be pretty much done other than obviously the clutch and flywheel. I'm still waiting for my new clutch. I am doing the 3-4 clutch. I picked up a used OEM flywheel and just had it resurface. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Check back on the next video. We got to tackle this engine bay, and I got some cool plans for it, so stay tuned for that video. And let me know how you guys are liking this new build. If you got any ideas, throw a comment down. I'm sure some of you are like me and just like the change of scenery, looking at that red truck every day. I got kind of sick of looking at it and working on it. We still have a couple things to do on it, but I gotta take a break from it and focus on something else. And then when I go back to that truck, I can full force go in, finish all the little things with it, and get it all buttoned up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.